So I'm like a... Like a shut up. So you're debating in a couple minutes? Are you scared? <laughs> what? Do you have anything to say? Inshallah we win. Inshallah the truth will avail. Okay, this is the debate team. There's this guy, Amir, his brother Ali, and then there's... Muhammad. Uh, so I'm Ali, <laughs> what are the, what are, what are, like, major arguments? No, what is the advantages of wearing hijab? You gonna stay warm? You gonna stay warm? That's a good point, actually. I need to try that. What are the disadvantages of wearing hijab? I see the disadvantage of wearing hijab is you take a lot of control. The question is, who's hijab needs more improvement? What's what I'm saying? So that's how you can do. That means you don't need to talk about advantages of wearing hijab. You do. You just unanswered your own question, Ali. <laughs> you, we're not talking about the advantages or disadvantages of the job. We're talking yeah. about the issues of the job. The advantages. Oh, I don't know why you're getting it down. Use the the rose theory. Oh, like a, a woman is like a rose, and the thorns are like a. No, I was. What are we doing? And just seeing the bait. The debate? Yeah. Are you excited? Yeah. Nice. In conclusion, we can say that both hijab is necessary for male and female, but clearly it is much more crucial for the women to wear hijab for various reasons. Number one, they're the child bearers of society and they stitch the fabric of society, number two. And number three, they're universal role models in the sense that if they act indecent, it doesn't go back to the individual, but it goes back to the religion. If I was to be walking today in the street, regardless whether I have a beard or not, somebody, if I was to act indecent, somebody wouldn't come and blame the religion, but he would blame me as an individual. Whereas when a female acts indecently with this hijab placed on her head, the indecency goes back not to the individual, but to the religion. And thus, you find many people come and argue. Your, your main argument was that if there is no demand, there would be no supply. Whereas it's the exact opposite. Because to everything in life, logically, there's a cause and there's an effect. The cause is that you're dressing indecently. The effect is that we are looking. Change the dressing, we will change the looks. Uh -huh. <laughs>
فجأنا واستشفعنا وتوسلنا بك إلى الله وقدمناك بين يدي حاجاتنا يا وجيها يا أبا الحسن يا علي بن الحسين يا زين العابدين يا ابن رسول الله يا حجة الله على خلقي يا سيدنا ومولانا إنا توجهنا واستشفعنا وتوسلنا بك يا وجيها عند الله اشفع لنا يا ابا جعفر يا محمد بن علي ايها الباطل يا ابن رسول الله يا حجة الله على خلقي يا سيدنا وتوسلنا بك إلى الله وقدمناك بين يدي حاجاتنا يا وجيها عند الله اشفع لنا يا أبا عبد الله يا جعفر بن محمد أيها الصادق يا حجة الله على خلقي يا سيدنا ومولانا إنا توجهنا واستشفعنا وتوسلنا بك إلى الله وقدمناك بين يدي حاجاتنا يا وجيها يا أبا الحسن يا موسى بن جعفر أيها الكاظم يا ابن رسول الله يا حجة الله على خلقي يا سيدنا ومولانا إنا توجهنا واستشفعنا وتوسلنا بك وقدمناك بين يدي حاجاتنا يا وجيها عند الله اشفع لنا عند الله يا ابا الحسن يا علي بن موسى ايها الرضا يا ابن رسول الله يا حجة الله على خلقي يا سيدنا ومولانا إنا توجهنا واستشفعنا وتوسلنا بك إلى الله وقدمناك بين يدي حاجاتنا يا وجيها يا أبا جعفر يا محمد بن علي أيها التقي الجواد يا ابن رسول الله يا حجة الله على خلقي يا سيدنا ومولانا إنا توجهنا واستشفعنا وتوسلنا
called the Waqafiyya. There was another representative named Yunus ibn Abd al-Rahman. Now Yunus ibn Abd al-Rahman was very good at promoting good and forbidding evil. But he never stood in his way. He spoke out against them. He said, no. Musa ibn Abd they told him, come on, we could share the money, we'll give you 10,000 gold coins. It's a lot of money in today's standards. Just leave us alone. Just forget about it. Now, uh, what he did, he, for, he, did it, he left them. He spoke out, and he did what he should do. And that cost him his life at the end, because once the Khalifa of the time asked him, who is more dear to you? Who do you like more? Imam Hassan or Hussein, or my two children? He told Imam Hassan al Hussein, he took his tongue. The tongue is the second level of an Amr al Ma'ruf when I can Amr al Ma'ruf. Unfortunately, it's cost him his life. Sometimes we see something wrong, but we can't speak out. But you just gotta do what you gotta do sometimes. Perfection. So the most important thing in reality is not the mechanical things that we are all good in, it's the moral perfection that we need to achieve. So it's very important to focus on morality, akhlaq. As they say, husnul khulq khayru rafiq. When you have good morals, when you have good manners, it is your best friend. Okay? Uh, because when you have good disposition, you know, we all know, we love people who have good manners. And the person could not necessarily be attractive. Sometimes you find a very, very attractive person, very physically attractive person, but their attitude is very harsh. You just hate the person, you, you dislike the character of the person. You might say, but this person is so attractive, why don't you like them? They say, well, as beautiful as they are, their akhlaq is not good, they're repulsive, they bother my presence. You know, my presence is bothered by them. On the flip side, you can have a person who's not very attractive, a person who could be not necessarily marketable. You might say that their looks are not so marketable. To me, everybody is beautiful. I mean, there's no person that's not beautiful. It's all a matter of perspectives, but at the end of the day, assuming we were to place them in a general market, you'd find that they would not be marketable. Because you know how the media market system maintains the Barbie doll uh, mentality, you know, or the Rambo mentality on the male side, you know, the Mr. Muscles versus Miss uh, Super Tiny, Tiny Waistline, uh, blonde haired, blue eyed. Now, if, first, if you don't fit into those two molds, then you're not as attractive. I'm saying a person who is generally not attractive, but such a person has a golden character. Their attitude is incredible. They're so pleasant. They're so beautiful. No matter how difficult the situation, they turn everything around as positive. You just have no option but falling in love with this kind of people. Okay? I was once watching a... Uh, and then I want you... We're going to have a discussion, inshallah. I was watching a, a BBC series... You know those English theater series, theatrical series, almost called Bleak House. I don't know if anybody's seen that, Bleak House. It's called Bleak House. It's a, it's a series. It's so beautiful. It's about the olden England time where there was this person who died and left a large sum of inheritance. And that whole city was going after the inheritance. And there was this one young girl who was actually the heir to this inheritance but her parents threw her away because she was conceived illegitimately. Okay? And so she was basically made to be a maid, and she was like a third-class citizen. But her character in the whole uh, series was so impeccably well presented. I mean, she was such a good moral person. Her morals were so good that she never spoke bad about anybody. Anybody who, who, who condemned her, she always accepted it. She was the most humble person, the most loving person, the most patient person. Everybody gravitated to her in any problems. Even the, the elite would go to her just for guidance. And that's, uh, you know, that's just the movie. It's an English movie, but it's so beautiful. You just... They haven't grown up in London, they don't understand it. There's a disconnect. Now that's relevant to, to the community that I live in. But I'm sure everyone here has their own uh, social... <coughs> so what we want to hear first from you guys is... What problems do you think there are in your community? What issues in the society you live in? So yeah. then we can suggest some uh, solutions. And the problems he's talking about are character problems within individuals that basically shapes the character of the community. For example, if I have a large collection of people in the community who are cheaters, and they like to cheat everybody, then I can say this is a cheating community. Not because everybody's a cheater, but because there's a large prevalence of cheating Therefore, we can say the community's aura, attitude is, 
that there's a high chance you're going to meet somebody who's a cheater. Okay? There are some communities that are very gentle and kind and very loving and very giving and forgiving. We say, well, that's a very loving community. Well, it's not the community that makes the character. It's the individuals in the community that make the character. So let's find out what are the social ills typically that we consider to be the causes of the lack of good morality. Let's say from the sister's side. Yes. Swearing. People who swear, okay. Let's, let's try to get, uh, uh, that's good. Swearing is good. What let's try to get from? to the heart of the bigger thing. Where does the swearing come from? Okay, I mean, how do they, where, where do they pick it up from? Basically from where? I don't know, they just learn it from grade 6s, you know, they start swearing from grade 5s, grade 6s. <coughs> okay, you make a very good point about swearing. Okay, let's talk for a few moments about swearing. What do you think causes people to swear? Anger. Yes, brother. Um, well, for one, anger, or for two, um, I know, like, kids, like, we were screaming to in my school that are swearing, like, bad swearing, right. and I can tell that, like, because I know the older siblings, that they probably learned it off them. Now, why, you said anger, most of you said anger. Yeah. So what causes people to be angry? Stress, stress causes anger. In so what cause, yeah, yeah, no, like, oh, yeah. From their parents, like, Parents are angry, and they learn from their parents. The parents swear, so they don't anger on their kids. And they learn from their parents. Yeah. So the parents, you think, are the cause of the anger? Yes. But let's go to the parents then. What makes the parents angry? Work, financial. Financial situations make them angry. I've seen very wealthy parents very angry too. Okay. These parents over here, that's us. And you kept losing them. It's not because parents are not good. Parents are not talking the right language to the children. They're not energizing their thinking capacities to the way they should be. So they, are, they feel... Higher level in heaven, higher level in Naftara, higher level in the, uh, the other world. So, that's why we are...